Well, Terry, thank you, thank you so much for receiving us uh, in this wonderful place. Um, so yourself as, a, as an architect, what, what is urban design and what does it imply? I think urban design involves us all. And I think um, once upon a time, architects did urban design as well as buildings. Uh, uh, I think town planning uh, does buildings as well as town planning. It is a um, it is an area in between planning and architecture and landscape. It's it's between all these different things, and it's about city making and um, about place making. I think we all recognise the benefits of it. We know a fine street. We know a fine urban setting. Uh, we go to visit cities around the world, and we we all know what makes a good city and our response to it. Um, and I think that that's sufficient definition uh, for me. Um, it's not a profession uh, as such, although it involves uh, pr uh, professional input. But I do think that many people are urban designers who are not professionals. Um, uh, Jane Jacobs was <laughs> essentially a housewife academic uh, and was a great understander of urban design and form, for example. It's, a, uh, it's an area that I have believed in passionately since, um, uh, since my student days. I studied um, urban design, or as it was called then, civic design in the, uh, in the 60s um, at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, where I had very good teachers. And it has been uh, a passion of mine ever since. It, ha it began as a fairly Cinderella, uh, uh, kind of activity, but it's grown and grown. I remember um, a speech given by Tony Blair, then Prime Minister, around about 1999-2000, uh, where he actually used the word urban design. And I thought, well, that's really quite an achievement now, because I remember having to explain to politicians in the 80s and the 90s just what is meant by urban design, but it's, uh, it became established and everyone now knows what it is and uh, you don't have to explain it. So uh, I've heard that you, you've been involved quite early on with the urban design group, uh, haven't you? Yes, I was involved in talks and, uh, and lectures and uh, uh, advocacy and whatever. Um, I think in the early 80s, but my first re recollection of something specific was um, I gave a talk in, uh, I think in 1985. I know it was the night that um, Richard Rogers received his gold medal and I was talking uh, at an alternative event <laughs> uh, set up by the Urban Design Group in, um, I think in Westminster University. Um, uh, and well, this involvement with the Urban Design Group, now you, uh, you're continuing it in a sort of way um, with the Urban Design Alliance, correct? Yes, the Urban Design Alliance was established uh, in the late 90s uh, when there was quite a, a lot of activity by uh, the new Labour government uh, in terms of the Urban Renaissance and the Urban Task Force and so on. And the various institutions came together, um, RIBA and uh, RICS, landscapers, uh, uh, town planning and architecture and so on, and the Urban Design Group. And um, the alliance was uh, established, first of all, led by, by myself, and I helped set this up. And I, I was the first leader of the Urban Design Alliance um, for, I think, a year then. And, um, it ran its course and it was a, a very good initiative at the time. I guess it, it meets the con one of the concepts of the, the Faro Review, which is the, the place as client. Yes, I've always argued that place uh, as client. I take it from uh, my architectural t tutor at uh, University of Pennsylvania, where he, um, he used to say, what does a building want to be? And I paraphrase that by saying, what does the place want to be? In other words, if you go to a place and you look at the place and you try and understand what makes it work or what, uh, 
what handicaps the police has, the police can tell you something. And I, 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 I do like to think that very often the police and its community and, and its physical shape and geography, the very, very physical presence of it, is an excellent client. It, it's, uh, it's the starting point without there having to be any other kind of client. Well, we just mentioned the Federal Review that's in itself, that that's quite a, an achievement uh, that your, your, your experience your, uh, is recognized by the government and being asked to, to deliver such a review. Uh, all this adventure of the Federal Review uh, started and what would you have to say about that? Well, I, um, I was asked uh, by uh, the Minister, uh, Ed Vasey, uh, Minister of Architecture uh, 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 in, in, in the Department of Culture. Um, he asked me to do a review and I said that I wanted to do a review of um, that, was, uh, uh, that interpreted uh, architecture and the other professions um, related to architecture in the broadest possible sense and that I really felt very passionate about um, broadening the the outlook uh, and uh, and and also addressing it not to politicians and not to party politics but addressing to the community involved in in urban planning in in the built environment so it is a review that um, addresses uh, as many issues as possible as um, in, in the broadest possible sense to encourage joining up to encourage linking up so that it's not a specialist review. And I think as a result, it had a very broad um, support and very broad take up. Uh, and it's proving to be, I, I think, a, a successful review. Uh, in the words of Ed Vasey, um, after we published it, he said, this is not so much a report for government, it is a, it is a movement. And I like that. London itself uh, has come quite a long way in terms of quality of urban realm and you, you, you've been part of this process with, with other professionals. Uh, is there also something that you would like to mention? Well, about? I campaigned um, and there was a lot of campaigning at the beginning of the Urban Design Group because um, along with other is issues that I used to help campaign about such as historic buildings. Uh, if one goes back to the 60s and 70s and early 80s, it was a, it was a time when um, uh, architecture particularly was seen as very dominant and very specific. And I, I, I took up campaigning and, that, and this resulted uh, in uh, successful campaigns such as um, stopping the, the, the tower that was going to be uh, placed at Mansion House and uh, uh, I, I also campaigned uh, um, regarding the town centre at Wimbledon and uh, at Hammersmith Roundabout and gradually this built up to me being asked to be involved in some of these things so I planned around Britain and in London many um, urban design master plans the South Bank, um, Paddington Basin, King's Cross uh, um, Greenwich Peninsula in London uh, but also Brindley Place in Birmingham and, um, and, the, and the Quayside in Newcastle which is my hometown and many other aspects of Newcastle and indeed over time university campuses and um, so it grew and grew as, as I think the demand for uh, urban planning grew and the realization that cities could be shaped um, in this way, in a very positive way, as people began to appreciate more and more the effects of uh, city making. Where do you think the, the future uh, of London and the United Kingdom is, is taking us in terms of uh, urban realm and uh, architecture? <laughs> well, um, someone asked me once, uh, uh, what would be my favourite period in history? And I said, actually, I'd like to come back in a hundred years to see where London was. Uh, it has gone through extraordinary changes, um, not just in my lifetime, in the last 10 years, it's, it's uh, grown and changed. 
and improved. Uh, I think many more people are um, involved in its improvement. Uh, uh, not just the professionals, but um, I think uh, politicians, of course, but also communities now uh, are very motivated with uh, their place, their neighborhood. Uh, they, their, the engagement of people uh, owes a lot to organizations like the Urban Design Group that has campaigned for so long. Uh, it's almost overwhelmed by the response now. Um, that Urban Design Group is, is only a, a, a part of uh, the scenery of, um, of building and making cities today, um, whereas once it was a lone voice. But there's no doubt in my mind that city making is the biggest uh, human endeavor of today, if not the biggest human endeavor ever in history, because we're making cities and urban living for uh, what will be 9 billion people with well over 50%, maybe 60, 65, 70% of them, all living urban lives. And that's a huge endeavor when you roll it out globally and into the future. Well, again, thank you so much for receiving us and congratulations for your award, uh, for your lifetime achievement. Well, many thanks indeed, and I'm very grateful and I'm very honoured to, to receive this.